Hey everybody, I'm so glad to find out that my videos are soothing or a form of therapy. I'm really excited to see a lot of you in the studio when we start up again. I've had a couple of requests about the cracked pot and the sexy pot, so I'm gonna make a big cracked sexy pot. Let's see, hold on. Okay, here we go. So this isn't that big, um, it's about four and a half pounds, close to what I did with the big bowl. I did show you guys yesterday the final product of some of the pots that I was working on. The teapot, um, a mug, two cracked pots, and still waiting on the big bowls. Those actually just went into the kiln this morning. Unfortunately, I'm only running about two kilns a week. Although some members have been bringing stuff. If you are part of another studio and you are working on stuff, um, just email me and we could probably work out some sort of firing schedule. It helps both of us. This way I can get some more kilns done a little quicker and you guys get your stuff. You don't have to wait till this whole situation is over. All right, guys, so that was me babbling while I got it centered. So we're gonna go ahead and, so it's funny when I watch these videos how many things I say a lot. So I'm gonna try and correct myself. I'm gonna try not to say I'm gonna go ahead. So remember, I'm not trying to shape it yet. So this is not like, well, just like every other pot that you make, your main goal, because I think I sound like a broken record, is to make your walls the desired thickness before you decide what shape you're aiming for. I had a strange dream last night that I was a college ceramics professor and I had something like 40 people. It was like one of those bad restaurant dreams I used to have. Um, and I had everybody yelling, uh, you have to get the clay up in there. Those who take my classes know what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and get these walls to a desired height and a desired thickness. Now I don't want them as thin as I would a regular sexy pot because I wanna do that sort of stretching action once I get the sodium silicate on there. This is a light brown speckle clay. Um, it does not fire this color. The first firing of it, the Bis fire, was, uh, presented itself to be a slightly pinkish color. That is not the end result. That's only at 1900 degrees. Uh, we're aiming for the second fire ring to go up to 23. And when it goes up to 2300 degrees, it becomes a nice sort of creamy off-white color with these little brown speckles on it. For those people, potters out there who know about glazes, we find it really hard to use the Amico glazes with the speckled glaze, with the speckled clay. So let us know, either comment on this video or send us a message. Tell us what you think the solution might be. We get a lot of pocking and pinholing, especially with a uh, obsidian and a few other ones. So, all right. So that's about the height that I want. I um, would have liked to have gotten a little bit more clay up in the bottom, but I might've gotten a little too thin too quickly. Let's do one more sort of straightening pull here. Not really doing anything major, just kind of getting it up tall there. Try to be prepared. I've got my uh, sodium silicate slip with iron oxide inside of it. You guys might have seen in that final product that I did, the iron oxide did not remain this color. It became a bit of a brown. Um, so from what I actually believe, I, 
It's actually rust. It's sort of like an iron, oxidized iron. Oh, there's something chunky in here. You do tell everybody that clay comes out of your clothes, but iron-based glazes tend not to. So. I'm gonna actually, no, I'm not gonna go all the way up. I'm gonna stop right around here. What I'm doing now is actually also a method of glazing. If you ever want to get like a straight line on something with an underglaze, you can go ahead and put it on the wheel and let it go. All right, so I'm gonna stop there so I can heat it up. Um, there's no reason for you to keep watching that. See you in a bit. Okay, everybody, I'm back. What I actually did was I let it dry with my heat gun and then I put another coat. I find that two coats of the sodium silicate actually gets the larger crack, which I think is a bit more dramatic. Um, you can choose to glaze your pot appropriately based on the size of the crack. If the, you have a very fine crack, <laughs> it's a very funny conversation. <coughs> if you have a very fine crack, um, you're not going to see as much and you're going to want to really embellish and bring out that crack a little bit more when you choose your glaze color. All right, I'm actually gonna use my, my throwing stick here to do the the uh, the stretch. I'm gonna have my wheel go a little fast. I'm gonna wet my tool. I'm gonna start down here. I'm not gonna scream sexy yet. I'm just gonna insinuate sexy. A little bit more of a shape here. Just to kind of tell the clay that eventually I wanted to go out a little wider. Go back in. Again, a full rotation every time I move. If you don't get a full rotation, you'll get a bit of an uneven wall, and a bit of a spiral. We're aiming for sort of a symmetrical pot. I try not to ever even, even when I'm by myself, I try not to cheat and see what it looks like until I've decided I have the desired shape. It's always sort of a nice surprise to see the stretch. Don't really love this yet. Let's see, let's get in here with our hands. Really get a full stretch. Try and get a smooth transition on the outside. People start to get stressed if their hand dries a little and I'm not as concerned right now. I'm gonna fix play with the lip a little bit more when I uh, continue finishing and finessing the final shape. 